Good afternoon, everyone. This is Carl F. Rose, recording live from Bedford, Pennsylvania, on um, Friday, um, oh, January, what is it? I gotta walk over here and see what it is. Friday, January, no, I mean, it was, no, what day is today? Damn it. Yeah. January 20th. Anyway, uh, what I want to talk about is the uh, uh, Detroit Lions and um, Sheila Ford in particular. Um, uh, this, uh, for the first time in, in many, many years, um, the Detroit Lions are being run um, it, how they should be. It, you know, it's a, football is a business. Sure, the players are out there; they're playing a game, but the organization as a whole needs to be run uh, like a, a regular business, which it hasn't um, in the last uh, fifty or sixty years or so until she came around. So, um, as fans, you know, we're frustrated. But imagine her growing up. And seeing the team, um, and watching her father just you know do absolutely nothing with it, then her mother taking over, and um, um, so I'm sure she loves the team, um, probably a zillion times more than any any fan can even imagine. So imagine her. Um, and and, the, and just the pain of watching them lose over and over again. Um, uh, she she does have um, she she went to Harvard, I believe it is, and got a business degree. And um, so I was I, I was really happy when when Martha Ford um, decided to hand over the reins to her. But it was a it was a wait and see kind of thing. It's, I was thinking, well, okay, it's it's staying with the Ford family. Uh, let's see um, how it's going to go. <laughs> Is it going to be down the, the same train wreck as usual? Uh, so so she gets in, and um, you know, it was at the end of the uh, the uh, Matt Patricia era, and finally, I guess she just had enough with it, and um, then she put in her people, football people. And I knew when she made that move and saw some of the things that, that Dan Campbell did to, right away, um, I knew they, they were on to something. And even though in, in um, Dan Campbell's first full year, he um, only won three games. But the, the, biggest thing, the biggest thing I noticed right off the bat is they were cleaning house um, from from the get go, um, all the the players that were just dead weight on the team that, that were brought in uh, with Patricia that were just uh, that were just dragging the, the organization down. Well, they cleaned them out. The worst thing is is that there's two two players that that basically Matt Patricia, um, the so called rocket scientist, uh, ended up chasing away was. Um, uh, Darius Slay and Quandre Diggs. Um, that was a tremendous. Uh, those were, I mean, for a rocket scientist, that had to be the stupidest thing to do. But anyway, well, it is what it is, and um, uh, you know the Lions aren't going to get those players back, but uh, they're going to develop um, players uh, who will be just as capable. Um, so basically, uh, because of what Matt Patricia did, you, you, you see the problems with the, the Detroit Lions, um, what they have today. But, you know, the, the first impact was was when they, they traded Stafford, and now you see what they've done with the offense. Now, this time around, let's see what they can do with the uh, uh, defense. And I am sure that in this offseason – there's going to be more house cleaning, and I think the game in Carolina, you know, forget the field position uh, conditions and uh, forget about this and that. Just look at the, the fact that they played a miserable game, 
and there were players out there that just just weren't doing it. And and uh, Coach Campbell took credit for the loss, and he didn't have the team prepared ready. And um, I mean, there could be eighty million excuses, but those are excuses. Um, the fact of the matter is, as De- as Coach Campbell said, that that he just didn't prepare the players well enough. And um, uh, yes, there was injuries, but um, there was just some. Um, what I'll say on the Carolina game is just lack of tackling. Um, and I am sure that that Carolina game is going to go, you're going to be really considered when, when you look at some of the players and I, and um, who do you keep? Um, who do you get rid of? Um, and that sort of thing. And I'm going to be, um, I, I've been looking at the free agents and the, the ones that could come to Detroit and, um, and also the uh, Lions free agents. Um, I'm going to do regular videos on, on, on that in the next few days on, on my main channel where I can actually do a um, video screen recording and, and show which players that, that personally I feel should, should stay or go and uh, possible options of, you know, in case – um, some in case them the money's a problem and they they can't resign somebody you know that that uh, we all want back so there's there's plenty of options out there so it's going to be an interesting off season and and that's that's really what this is about so uh, you know they they've had the, the offense is, is pretty much in place but I mean there's some some you know, there's going to be players that are going to be moving around, even on the offense, some going out, um, some coming in and, and that sort of thing. But uh, their focus now, um, two things. I mean, really got to shore up the, the, the run defense and, um, you know, the, the back, and actually the, the, the back end, the secondary. Um, um, I mean, the defense as a, as a whole really needs, needs improvement. And, um, uh, the, uh, and, uh, and, um, and that's what I think you're going to focus on. They're, they're going to focus on. And I think, um, there'll be some, some maneuvering probably in the, you know, with the draft and the, um, trading up or down and that sort of thing. And, um, uh, you can, you can rest assured that uh, Brad Holmes is going to be, uh, doing the same thing this time on the other side of the ball. So, um, with the way the NFC North is looking, um, this uh, 2023 could be a real good uh, year for the Lions because um, we'll just have to wait and see what happens with like Aaron Rodgers. What where is he going? What's he going to do? Is he going to retire? Is he going to stay with the Packers? Is he going to go with a, another team? But basically, the Vikings and the, the Packers are. Um, on a downward trend, uh, Vikings have indicated they've, uh, from what I understand, they're going to keep Kirk Cousins, um, and actually that's that's music to my ears because what Kirk Cousins is going to be facing next year is an improved Lions defense. That's probably goes without saying, and and um, um, and Dan Campbell said um, uh, just recently he said. Look, every every at the end of the year, and every uh, every time you go into the the off season, and then you go into spring, you know, uh, go you know, to the mini camps and all that. It's like you're you're starting over. You gotta you gotta you're starting from square one again, and um, and and that's absolutely absolutely correct. So um, this that's going to be good. It's it's I can't wait to see who they get, but. Um, uh, things are in the right direction, and um, uh, we'll just see. Um, the Lions really do need to win the division. That's what they need to do. Um, five and one um, in the division this last year, that's uh, pretty good. And um, uh, the way things are going, they, they could – if they, they sweep their, their division opponents um, – um, that's a big step in the right direction because, uh, for one thing, w- uh, sweeping the division six and zero, and in the event of any kind of a tiebreaker, 
um, the Lions would would own it because they, they have the, you know, they would have the, the two wins um, against their divisional opponent, and that's kind of what you want. It's hard to do, but um, uh, you bet they're going to be working on that. So anyway, I just wanted to get this out, and um, and we will talk to you next time. Have a good day.